Today we're showing you how to install the Tusk TPI idle adjustment screw on your KTM Group 150, 250, and 300 cc two-stroke TPI dirt bike. Now, if you have one of these bikes, you probably already know getting the engine to idle right is a common issue with these. Now you can adjust your idle bypass screw and all that's doing is changing the amount of air that is bypassing your throttle plate. It changes your mixture. And a lot of times if you get the idle in the right spot, you're gonna have poor throttle response off the bottom. So with that being said, the reason so many people are installing these TPI idle adjustment screws is they not only let you get a good idle that is easy to adjust, but you're also gonna maintain that good throttle response. The stock idle screw is locked in place by some permanent locking agent. And there's two common ways to loosen that up and remove the screw without removing the throttle body from the bike. The first method is to use a debonder. You're gonna apply this a few times to the top of the bolt and let it sit overnight. And that should help that debonder loosen up. The second method is to use a soldering iron with a clean tip. And you're gonna hold that on top of the screw for 10 to 15 minutes. Now to remove that stock screw, you're gonna use a 2.5 millimeter Allen or a T10 Torx bit on a two inch shank along with a quarter inch drive to quarter inch hex socket adapter. Now if the locking agent is broken down properly, the screw will move with very little effort. So this is very important to not apply too much pressure. Otherwise the stock screw is gonna strip out and you're gonna have a whole new set of issues. In our experience, these first two methods don't always work. So we're gonna show you the tried and true method by using a map gas torch. Just be aware this is gonna require the throttle body to be removed from the bike. To get this done, you're gonna need some common hand tools. I'm not gonna go over each of those specific to this job. T20, 25 and 45 Torx bit sockets. Now to remove that stock idle screw, most of these are gonna take a two and a half millimeter Allen, but if you have an older machine, it might be a T10 Torx bit. So take a look down in there before you begin. With that being said, if you're doing this on the bike, if you're using the debounder or whatever, you're gonna to wanna to have those bits in a two inch shank, and you might even have to grind them down to get them narrow enough to go down that passageway in the throttle body. Now, other than that, make sure you have a spring puller, get that exhaust off. We're also using a 1964 inch drill bit. If you don't have that exact size, you can go up or down, whatever you want. We also have a round file. And then we're using some anti-seize grease and contact cleaner as well. Of course, we have our torch. It's the map gas. It gets a little bit hotter than propane. And then you're also gonna wanna have your wake up plug if you are removing the throttle body because you're gonna wanna prime that oil line and make sure you don't have any air bubbles in there. Other than that, we're using safety glasses and some rags. And then if you need this TPI idle adjustment screw, it's available on our website. Also, some of these tools are and even the chemicals. So go check that out or just click the link in the description below. So just behind the pipe, we've got that throttle body cover. We need to gain access to that. So I'm gonna remove the silencer and the pipe. Now for this black cover, I'm just using a T20 Torx bit. We'll remove that screw. And then there's a little tab that clips on at the bottom. So you just wanna pull down and out on that tab and remove the cover. First, we're gonna remove our seat. Then we have our air filter cover. Dang, this thing is gnarly. So we're gonna be cleaning that while we're in there too. And then obviously on the subframe, we're just loosening the top two bolts and taking the bottom ones all the way out. Next, you wanna loosen the clamp on the air boot. Then we're just popping that TPS cover off. We've got the T20 bolt in the back and the safety T25 for those front two. Then we're gonna remove that TPS sensor and Normally I wouldn't recommend doing this stuff, but on this one, there's not an adjustment that we're gonna be making. With everything loosened up, 
you wanna swing the subframe up and the air boot might be stuck on the throttle body. So you might have to use a hook tool or something like that to help push that off. And then once the subframe is swung up, you can go ahead and tighten the upper subframe bolts to hold it there. The next step is to measure how far that idle adjustment screw is holding your throttle cam open. So I just got my Allen set and actually found an Allen that just has a slight amount of drag on it. So this is my four and a half millimeter Allen. The reason we're taking this measurement is so we have a starting point. So once we have that screw removed, we can install that new one to the same height then make adjustments from there. Now on the other side, we're gonna loosen up these two cables. You just need to pull up those rubber boots. We've got our 10 millimeter wrench. Loosen them up and pull the cables out. You're gonna to have to rotate them to get them out of this cam. And we need to disconnect our oil line. It's not a bad idea to plug this with a rubber cap, rivet, or even a small bolt. Now we'll loosen that front clamp and remove the throttle body. Now over at the bench, I'm gonna clamp this in some soft jaws in our vise, and that's gonna help hold it in place. Well, I torched the back side of this throttle body. I obviously don't wanna damage any plastic parts or rubber parts or anything like that. So I'm gonna to try to focus all the heat just on the back side of that screw. And when I clamp this in, right where those cables mount, you can see there's a little raised area. I'm gonna clamp just below that. And then when you clamp it in, make sure you don't damage your fitting for that oil line. Get it in there so it's snug, but don't go too tight. You don't wanna damage that aluminum. So with that being said, again, ours is the 2.5 millimeter Allen. So I'm just gonna have that sitting in there. As I heat the back side of this, it's probably gonna take about a minute. But again, you just wanna make sure it breaks free real easy. You shouldn't have to put a lot of tension when you're doing this. Otherwise, the screw will strip. So there it is, it just broke free real easy. And if it ever tightens up while you're removing that, just make sure you heat it back up. But I'd say that was probably, what, 45 seconds? That thing's pretty hot. I'm just gonna let it cool for a minute. All right, we've let everything cool off. So I wanna clean this up now. I'm gonna start by just spraying off that old screw and down into the hole with a little contact cleaner. Clean all those threads out. I'm just gonna run this down and up one time. And obviously if it binds, make sure you stop and figure out what's going on. But we just wanna make sure all those threads are clean and that new screw is gonna go in smooth. Okay, now for our idle adjustment screw. I've got this anti-seize. I wanna make sure and use some of that on here. And the reason I'm doing this, this is stainless steel going into aluminum. I don't want to have any issues with binding. And then we're just going straight through the bottom. Springs on the outside, just like this. And we'll screw that in. So right about right there. That's where it starts to move the throttle cam. So again, I took that measurement. I just used this Allen, but if you have calipers, that's great too. So right about there, that's gonna be a good starting point, but we're gonna make adjustments as soon as it's on the bike. Um, now with this, on the other side, I do wanna show that idle bypass screw. So the bike we're working on, it's a 2021. These idle bypass screws from the factory came a little bit further out. Same with the bikes that are newer than that. But some of the older bikes, the idle bypass screw might not be as far out. and some of those run best anywhere from half to one turn out on that. But again, you just wanna start with the stock setting. If it runs fine, you might not even have to mess with it. If you do feel like you need to make adjustments, going in restricts the airflow. 
So it's going to richen it up and going out increases that airflow or the air that is bypassing that butterfly valve. So that's going to lean the mixture out. So let's go ahead and see where we're at. We're straight up and down. You can make a mark or we actually already have that mark from the factory. So we're going half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, about almost three and three quarter. So I'm gonna put this back. Line up my paint mark. So we're back to that factory setting and if we feel like we need to make adjustments, we can. So other than that, this thing is kind of dirty. So I'm gonna go ahead and wipe some of that off and then bring this back over to the bike. So with that cleaned up, there is one more thing you wanna do at the bench. We've got that cover. You wanna set that in place and mark where you need to notch it out to fit over your new screw. So to get that drilled out, I've got a 19 64th inch drill bit, piece of scrap wood. I'm just setting the corner on that. And then I'm gonna drill to the deepest point. And again, just trim out the sides. And if you need to blend it together, you can use a round file or sandpaper or whatever you have. And we'll make sure this fits. So there we have it. We're clearing the spring all the way around. So we can now bring this over to the bike. Now we're gonna clean up the sealing surface for the throttle body. We wanna make sure there's no dirt that's gonna get inside when we reinstall it. Go back to the air boot and we're gonna set this in place. You can see we have the locating tabs on that boot. And the little pin in the middle of the throttle body, just make sure that's lined up and tighten the clamp down. Okay, then I'll loosen those two upper subframe bolts, reinstall that air boot, make sure it's pushed on all the way. All right, now make sure the inside of your throttle position sensor is cleaned up. You're gonna set this in place and there's not gonna be an adjustment for it. Like we mentioned before, we've got this cover to protect it. And then for these screws, I've got a little blue Loctite on them. Small screw in the top corner and we'll snug them all down. And I'll reinstall that lower subframe bolt and we'll tighten both of them down on each side. And I do have some blue Loctite on there. Oh, my favorite part, look at this thing, beautiful. Now we can reinstall the air filter cover. And if you don't already know these grommets for the air filter cover pins, sometimes they can be kind of sticky. So if you don't want that to happen, you can take a little bit of grease, put that right on there. It's gonna keep it good, help it go on easy and should be able to remove it just a little bit easier too and make sure you have your side covers back in place. Now on the other side, we've got this oil line. Put that back in place. Reinstall the clamp. And since we have this removed, we need to prime this. So we're gonna do that in a second as soon as we have everything hooked up. So with the throttle in the closed position, the shorter cable that's gonna to go to the back of the throttle body. We'll start with that. And just pulling that flat to get it in place. And we've got the second cable going in this front position. And before I tighten those down, I'll just verify that everything works smooth. Now I can go ahead and tighten these down. Just make sure you have some free play. And just make sure that nut on the bottom is pressed all the way in when you do that. Now we can reinstall our cover. And we've got the subframe bolts on this side and make sure you always start them by hand. That's just gonna help prevent a cross thread. 
Then we'll clip this plastic piece back in place. To prime the oil pump, you've got this diagnostic connector that usually sits in front of your battery or in our case, underneath this ECU. So you've got this cap you wanna pull off. There's a little clip, a little tab to pull up on. It should pull right off. And then what we're gonna do is we've got the wake up plug. And if you need one of these, the link will be in the description below. I'm gonna clean this off. There's a little bit of dirt around there. We have our wake up plug. We're not gonna connect this yet. I've just got it ready. I'm gonna hold my throttle wide open. I'm gonna connect this. You can hear your fuel pump come on. So you wanna wait five seconds with the throttle wide open. And as soon as you release it, you can hear the oil pump prime. And then as soon as it quits clicking, you can go ahead and remove the wake up plug. And we're probably gonna burn a little extra oil here on initial startup, but we just wanna make sure that we didn't have any little air gaps when we remove that line. So it's a good safety precaution. We'll go ahead and reinstall our cap. Put this back where we found it. And then we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our seat. And all that's left is installing this pipe and silencer. And we're using a little high temp silicone on these O-rings. We've got good O-rings on there. We just wanna make sure we don't leak any oil out. Now, if you have issues with oil leaking out of this joint too, you can put a little silicone on there. With everything back together, you wanna to set the idle. So make sure you are in a well-ventilated area, bring the bike up to operating temperature. And then if you're using a tack, you can set the idle at 14 to 1500 RPM. If you're not, just turn the idle in to where the bike barely idles on its own and it's not gonna die on you. You're gonna be good to go. So let's go ahead and start this up. Now for us, we've got our idle set, we're done. I am gonna leave that idle bypass where it's at, but if you feel like your throttle response is not good and you wanna make adjustments to that, go ahead and do that. Again, you want the bike to be at operating temperature, but keep in mind that we'll change the idle, so you're probably gonna to have to adjust that screw again once you make those adjustments. That's how you install the Tusk TPI idle adjustment screw on the KTM Gas Gas and Husk Varna TPI two strokes. Now. This is gonna make the bike idle way better and you're gonna have a lot more fun while you're out on the trails. So if you need one of these, you can find these on our website. Just click the link in the description below. We also offer just about anything you'd want for your bike. So go check that out. We offer free shipping on orders over $75. And if you have any questions about this process, leave those down in the comments. If you wanna see more helpful content like this, subscribe to our channel. I'm Charles with Rocky Mountain ATVMC. Thanks for watching.